Hey Collider fans, John Roca here. Well, Deadpool 2 is right around the corner and everyone is getting excited for this one. You're absolutely right. We're gonna get more Deadpool, we're gonna get some Domino action, and we're gonna get some X-Force. But what I'm most excited for is we are finally gonna get Cable on screen. Josh Brolin will be bringing the bionic-eyed, muscle-bound, time-traveling mutant with a penchant for big guns to life. Your comic book-loving friends have probably shared their excitement with you already, but some of you might be asking, who is this Cable guy? Oh! Billy. No, not that one, that one. Well, I'm here to give you an everything you need to know about Cable, but we're afraid to ask Primer before you walk into your local theater and catch the new adventure from everyone's favorite chimichanga-loving mercenary. Hit it! Nathan Christopher Charles Summers, a.k.a. Cable, was created by Rob Liefeld at the behest of Marvel Editor-in-Chief Bob Harris. Harris wanted a military leader type in the X-Men universe to counter Professor X's more cerebral type of leadership at the time. Liefeld designed the character, gave him the name Cable, made him a time traveler from the future, created his backstory, and Harris suggested that iconic bionic eye. Cable first appeared in Uncanny X-Men number 201 as the baby of Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, and Madeline Pryor. But we'd have to wait four years until we saw him again in New Mutants number 87. And when we did, he was the fully formed Cable we know and love. You're probably thinking, how did he grow so fast in four years? Well, keep listening, true believers. We find out in the comics that his birth was orchestrated by the evil geneticist Mr. Sinister, who had created a clone of Jean Grey, and that clone was Madeline Pryor. So how did Cyclops and Madeline get together when he is supposed to be in love with Jean Grey? Well, when the X-Men were on a space mission, Jean Grey triggered something called the Phoenix Force. Uh, now, that's a video for another day. The Phoenix Force consumed her, turned evil, and attacked the X-Men. Jean battled the Phoenix Force from the inside out and saved the X-Men, but the struggle caused the Phoenix Force to self-destruct and kill Jean Grey. I'm doing air quotes here, people. A little while later, Cyclops is still mourning the loss of Jean when he meets a woman that bears a striking resemblance to her, the aforementioned Madeline Pryor. She's a cargo pilot in Anchorage, Alaska, working for Scott's grandparents. They meet at a Summers family reunion, which I hear is off the chain when the Summers brothers, Cyclops, Havoc, and Vulcan play Blast the Tail Off the Donkey. Scott and Madeline have a whirlwind romance, but Scott becomes obsessed that Madeline looks a lot like Jean. Jimmy Stewart and Vertigo, anyone? And even finds out that she is the sole survivor of a plane crash that occurred on the same day as Jean Grey slash Phoenix died. Still air quoting here, people. He confronts Madeline about it. She gets pissed, punches Scott, and runs away. But she's abducted by the villain Mastermind as revenge for the Phoenix Force thing from before. The X-Men fight him off and Madeline is almost killed. Storm resuscitates her, Scott gets it through his thick head that Jean is dead, he marries Madeline and retires from active duty with the X-Men and lives happily ever after. Or so we think. See, Madeline gets corrupted by demonic influences and uses Baby Nate, aka Cable, as a sacrifice to open a portal between Earth and Limbo, a demon-infested dimension. Cyclops, X-Factor, and the X-Men unite to stop this from happening. We find out that the aforementioned Mr. Sinister had planned the union of Scott and Madeline, believing their offspring would help him take out Apocalypse. Yeah, that guy. Apocalypse learns of this, captures Cable, and infects him with a deadly techno-organic virus. I hate when that happens. After this all goes down, a member of the clan Ascani, a sisterhood dedicated to opposing Apocalypse, appears to say that she can heal Nate, but she has to take him to her own era, which is alternate Earth 4935. Cyclops, who is out of his mind with worry for his child and Madeline, agrees even though Ascani tells him that they will never see Nate again, and Cable is taken 2,000 years into the future. We find out that this mother, Ascani, is actually Cable's time-displaced half-sister, Rachel. Jesus, I can't even with this family. She clones Cable just in case she can't cure his virus. Apocalypse servants track down Ascani and Cable. They attack them, but they mistakenly steal the clone instead of Cable. Apocalypse raises the clone as his heir and names him Strife. Strife will end up being Cable's main nemesis in the comics. After surviving the attack, Rachel pulls the psyches of Scott Summers and Jean Grey into her future, injects them into two new characters named Slim and Red, and they raise him for the next 12 years and teach Cable how to use his mutant powers to keep the techno-organic virus at bay. Afterwards, Cable defeats Apocalypse as a teenager, grows up, gets married, and has a child. But Strife shows up, remember him, and kills Cable's wife and son. Strife escapes into the past using a time travel device, and Cable follows him. Cable ends up in Scotland, of all places, years before his actual birth, and is taken in by geneticist Moira McTaggart, who teaches him how to speak English. 
He calls himself Cable as a two-on-the-nose metaphor about being a link between the present and the future. Eventually, Mora sends him to visit her friend Professor Xavier in the U.S. He connects with Xavier, but his desire to capture Strife is too powerful, and he forms a group called the Six Pack to track down Strife. The group is pretty violent and leaves Carnage wherever they go. I told you that Marvel wanted a military leader, didn't I? Eventually, Cable reunites with Professor X and becomes the leader of the New Mutants. He sees the potential the New Mutants have to help him destroy Strife, so he reorganizes the group into the X-Force. Boom. And now you are ready for Deadpool 2. Uh, one last thing to remember, Cable has an arsenal of super high-tech gadgets that allow him to time hop and teleport weapons from the future and a damn moon base ship named Grey Malkin. Uh, we'll see how much of that ends up in the movie because I got a feeling this one is going to be a nutty ride. Now, some of you might be asking, what about Cable and Deadpool? Well, this is not everything you wanted to know about Cable and Deadpool, but we're afraid to ask. But if you want to explore their relationship, I would highly recommend diving into Cable and Deadpool Volume 1, Issues 1 through 6, to get a taste of their relationship as rivals, friends, and then rivals again, and then friends again. It's a complicated relationship. All right, thanks for watching this video, and let us know if you're excited to see Cable on the big screen as well. Remember to like and share this video on your social media, and subscribe to Collider for more videos just like this. Now, go grab a chimichanga and enjoy Deadpool 2. Your bullets. They're really fast.